Well, good morning and welcome to Over the Vest Nursery's YouTube channel. It's a beautiful day in early summer. There's hardly a cloud in the sky. It's a nice temperature. Our plants are all growing really well. And it's lovely to be outside and especially to get the opportunity to tell you about some of the fantastic plants that we can grow here in this region. That's the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic states of the US. Now, if you're a returning subscriber, thank you very much for subscribing and thank you for joining us today. If on the other hand, you haven't quite subscribed to our channel yet, now might be a good time to do so because we're publishing new videos all the time on lots and lots of interesting and really good performing plants. And if you happen to see anything that you like, it would be great if you could kindly click the like icon too, because that will help other people find the information as well. And of course, your comments are always very welcome. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we got a comment from somebody saying that they viewed the video and that it was very helpful, but they weren't totally convinced. Well, I thought about that and I thought maybe it's time to do a little bit of an update to take you from the time when we filmed some of the ones this spring in early spring when everything was dormant and just beginning to get ready to grow and now bring you back to the same plants to show you how they've turned out several weeks later. And right here in this part of the garden, as you see, these are the spireas that we pruned early in the spring. As you see, they've grown up beautifully. This is Spirea Neon Flush with its beautiful bright pink flowers, lovely green foliage and nice light brown stems growing up, producing growth that's about 18 inches or so high and covered, absolutely covered in lots of these beautiful flowers. But now at this time of year, there's another little thing you can do with it, and that is that you, when the flowers are beginning to go over, just like they are now, you can go in with a pair of pruners and you can freshen them up by removing some of these browning flowers. Now, you don't have to do that, but if you do it now at this time of year, as you can see, it takes off some of these discolored flowers and leaves it nice and fresh looking. It only takes a few minutes and I think it's worth doing. And especially keeps the new flowers coming on on all the growth that we stimulated whenever we pruned them back in the springtime. Now, as you see, this is neon flush. Over here is Magic Carpet. It is now almost finished flowering and so has this beautiful little yellow variety here called Gold Mound. Just a few flowers left on it and now's the time when you can go in and you can prune this back even harder taking off all of these old flowering stems like this and that will help to stimulate it into a new round of flowering It'll also help to produce some new fresh growth. Now you can do it as I'm doing here with my pruners, just going through removing the flower heads. Or of course, if you want to speed things up a little bit, you could use hedge and shears. Just like we've done on many things before, it's really just a matter of going in with a hedge and shears and just giving it a little bit of a trim over like this. It helps certainly to shape the plant up, remove the discolored flowers and stimulate plenty of young fresh growth again so that we're going to have a new round of flowering in about two or three weeks time. And look how our hydrangea incredible have turned out. You'll remember that we pruned these in the early part of the spring when everything at that stage was dormant and we were still in just the beginnings of the growing year. We pruned them hard back. And if you want to find out more about it, check out that video here on this channel. And then as you see, several weeks later, look what's happened. They've grown out 
from the base of the plant produced these beautiful big strong stems and now they're just beginning to make these dome shaped lime green flowers that are just now emerging. They're coming out first with this kind of soft lime green color then going through to a very nice creamy white and then as they mature and they develop they're going to turn into size of almost soccer balls that are going to be bright, gleaming, glowing white, all held, and this is important, on these strong, sturdy stems above this lovely, bright green foliage. This really is a beautiful variety, hardy, tough, easy to grow, thoroughly reliable, and as you see, it responds really well to that little bit of work that we do in early spring. When you cut them back in early spring, that encourages all of the strong growth, which then produces these nice, big, strong, sturdy stems that carry the heads without them flopping over. Tim Wood developed this variety in 2004 at Spring Meadow Nurseries. He took the old tried and true and highly valued variety, Annabelle. And then he improved on it by selecting this form with extra strong stocky stems that doesn't flop over like that old fashioned favorite. Nothing wrong with it, a beautiful plant, but here's the one that's improving upon it. This is Hydrangea Incredible. It's just one of a lovely range of several different selections that come out at different sizes and different color hues all sorts of lovely varieties that are very easy to grow and as you see the results from that little bit of work in the early part of the spring has really paid off very handsome dividends and as you see the roses that we pruned just before St Patrick's Day have now grown out and are covered with lots and lots of flowers. These have literally been in flower now for about three weeks, still putting on a good show and still showing really nice growth and good performance too, because these are in what we call our no spray trials. These are varieties here that have never been sprayed with a fungicide. They are quite literally growing without any chemical intervention. But there is one thing that we can do to them now, and that's a matter of going through, and just like we did with the spireas, removing the old flowers, we call it deadheading, and when you do that, you'll stimulate again new growth and divert the energy that otherwise would go into making seed into producing new growth and more flowers that's going to continue on through the rest of the summer. And this, if you don't recognize it here, and also here is the Rose True Bloom True Passion, one of our top all-time performing varieties, does superb without any spraying, and is interesting in that this plant does not make rose hips. So therefore, if you don't deadhead it, this will still keep growing out, making flower bud, and still keep flowering during the summertime. On the other hand, there are some varieties like this one, which is also a superb variety. This is True Bloom, True Sincerity. Gorgeous flowers, as you see, but also now lots of little hips that we should remove to keep it growing nice and vigorously and producing lots of flowers. And just like we did with the spirea, you can go in with your pruners and you can remove these old flowering heads, just snipping the stem back, taking off the entire flowering head, as you see, because these are now spent flowers and it's busy putting energy into rose hips that we really don't need. So you can go in and just snip off the whole flower head. And then when you do that, you'll stimulate young growth that will come from lower down and that's the stuff then that in about three weeks or so is going to carry a whole new round of flowering. Now you don't have to be too precise, but just to show you if you haven't done it before, here's an old flower that you can remove right in the middle like that and that then leaves these young buds to grow out and develop. 
But if you look here, you'll see this was a fluorine chute here that had four flower heads on it. And down here, you'll see that there's a new fresh growth just beginning to push out. That's obviously where the growth's going to come from. So with the pruners, you go in just above that point, snip out the old flowering heads, and then, of course, now, as you see, you're getting lots of young, fresh growth and already a tiny little embryonic flower bud in that part of the shoot. So, as you see, it only takes a few moments to go through. You definitely will freshen up the plant, stimulate young growth and keep the flowers going right through the season. It's worth doing, it doesn't take that long, and as you see, we're busy working on true sincerity. This is true gratitude here, a very nice, taller growing rose that sometimes is used as a mini climber. It's virtually finished now, so by going through and taking these heads off, that will certainly put it into a new round of flowering. And then this is true inspiration that is also virtually finished this round of flowering. So, as you see, lots to do in the garden, but it's worthwhile because you're going to keep your plants nice and healthy and colorful and flowering. Now, the video that our viewer was commenting on was the one that we filmed way back in springtime when we were pruning this, the tree hydrangea, hydrangea limelight. Now, at that time of year, again, it was in its dormancy. It was at the start of the year. Everything looked kind of dormant and desolate looking, but look at it now. Look at all of this strong, lush, vigorous growth. Stems on here that are springing out from the center of the crown in a well-shaped head. Stems that are as thick as your finger, sturdy, tough, reliable, and very shortly now, we're going to start to see, yes, I can just start to see the first flower buds. And when these come out, it's gonna have these magnificent big white flower heads. So stay tuned, because when that happened, I'll be bringing you back to show you why it's important to prune your tree hydrangeas and why it's good to be convinced that it's worth doing that sort of work in the garden. Just beautiful, very happy about how this is turning out. It's another job well worth doing. Now, if there's one thing I wanted to show you that has resulted from some of the work that we did earlier in the year. It's this. Just look how the lavenders have turned out. This is Lavendula head coat, a really magnificent variety. But look how they've responded to the pruning that we gave them with hedge and shears in the early part of the year. Short and compact and bushy with lots of lush foliage right to the ground. And then look at all of these flower stalks crowded with flowers. The pollinating insects are loving it. There's a lovely fragrance wafting in the air and they just look nice and healthy and happy and very colorful. And then over here, we also have the taller, slightly later growing variety that, as you see, is poised now to give us a whole round of slightly different shaped flowers, but equally beautiful. This is Lavendula Phenomenal, and this one is a little bit more vigorous growing, but as you see, has responded beautifully to that trimming that we gave it then too. And if you haven't caught the videos yet, take a look through this channel because there's two on there. There's one that I mentioned that is where you do the spring pruning. And then in a couple of weeks time, when these flowers begin to go over, we'll go in again, give them another prune, and that way we'll get it to flower again, twice in the same season. That's what is nice to be able to show you how you can be a little bit more successful with your gardening and also try things out yourself at home. Perhaps not always as vigorous and strong pruning as I do. If you're wondering about it, do a little bit, test it, but eventually I think you'll see that by doing it timely and frequently, you'll be able to get really beautiful effects from your garden. 
This is David Wilson. Enjoy your gardening. It's good for us and it's very good for our environment too.